The Bird is supposed to be some kind of amazing approach disc, with a lot of people praising its look, feel, and performance. It's made by a company called Castaplast, located in Sweden. And if you've never heard of them, you're not to blame, as this company has only existed for about 10 years. Well, we've been using the Berg for a few months now, and we feel we have a great understanding of this disc, and we're so excited to share our discoveries with you. Does it live up to all the hype? Should you buy one for yourself? Well, you'll soon find out. So let's get into it. Now, before we get started, we have some exciting news to announce that Justice has partnered up with acerunners.ca to do this awesome Berg review. Ace Runners was kind enough to send us 12 Bergs in varying plastics and weights so that we could get a thorough understanding on this disc and give you guys an in-depth review. If you haven't checked out their website yet, we would highly recommend it. They always have a ton of inventory. Their site is very intuitive, so it's easy to find what you're looking for, and they have excellent customer service. So be sure to check them out the next time you're looking for some disc golf equipment. So the Berg has a speed of one, a glide of one, a turn of zero, and a fade of two. And if you didn't know, the name Berg is Swedish for mountain. Now, if you try and find a similar disc on the market from big companies like Innova and Discraft, you're just not going to find it. Castaplast wanted to make an approach disc that eliminates many of the inconsistencies that come with throwing an approach too far or losing it too much to the left or right. The speed of one and the glide of one make it so that this disc doesn't want to stay in the air. It really just wants to drop. And the fade of two make it that it's very stable for an approach disc, so it's really not going to deviate too much from where you release it. It's therefore a very high speed stable approach disc that you can put some power into without worrying about losing too much control. We've heard people call it a flying frozen burger or pizza or even dinner plate and these comedic descriptions are really not that far off. Now one of the most iconic and really favorite features for a lot of disc golfers is its shape and you've probably never felt anything like it before. It has a very thick and beefy rim, which truly helps control the speed as well as the stability. And the top is very concaved, which helps reduce any kind of glide so you're not going too far past the basket. But its best and most notable feature is definitely the thumb track groove, which is meant to give your hand and thumb more control and comfort. And in our opinion, it feels so good. The thumb fits beautifully in that groove and you definitely feel like you get a bit more control. Now the Castaplast Bird comes in four different plastics and we were lucky enough to test all four. Their first plastic is the K1 line and it's their most premium and durable plastic that they offer. It's similar to the Innova Star or the Discraft ESP, but it has a bit more grip, it's a little bit more gummy, and therefore it also has a little bit more flexibility, but not much. It's a very comfortable plastic that's really hard to kind of scuff up and wreck, and its flight characteristics are going to stay the same for the longest amount of time. Their next plastic offering is called the K1 Soft, which was initially called K2. Now the K1 Soft is very similar in terms of premium quality to the K1, except this one is more soft, flexible, and grippy. Having such a bendy disc was not something that we were used to, and we felt like it was gonna be hard to commit to certain shots and throw certain lines, but that definitely wasn't the case. It flew almost identical to the K1, maybe a touch understable just because of its flexibility, but it really was hard to notice. And just as a side note, the K1 line and the K1 soft come in both solid and translucent colors, which is different from other brands like Innova and Discraft. So just be careful, be mindful of that if you're looking to pick one up. Now their third plastic offering is called the K3 line and it's their base plastic, really the cheapest plastic that they offer. This type of plastic is good in all weather conditions and will beat in a lot quicker. But truthfully, from our experience and gripping it ourselves, it feels a little bit more premium than a lot of other base plastics from different brands. Because of its firmness, we felt the disc was just a touch more overstable, but it really wasn't that noticeable. But remember, it's definitely gonna change a little bit quicker over time than the other premium plastics. And finally, their fourth plastic offering is the K1 Glow Line, which is identical to the K1 line, except now the plastic can be used 
in the dark. We found no difference in performance whatsoever. So after testing all four plastics, we truly feel that their flights are very similar with minimal differences. All of them are great to pick up, great to use, and it's really gonna come down to personal preference. So now let's look at what this disc does well. Now what typically makes approach shots difficult are the subtleties required in order to get the disc to land near the basket. Luckily, the Berg helps eliminate much of the doubt and allows you to play more aggressively and not be penalized for making a run at the basket. Its thick profile helps you minimize your imperfections, which means that it's really hard to throw this disc too far. Honestly, it's very hard, and it's even hard to lose it too much to the left or right. Even with our nose-up approach shots, they still went almost the same distance as our nose-down approach shots, and our left and right dispersion still allowed us to get a pretty decent putt at the basket. It also catches the ground incredibly well and can withstand strong wind conditions. So it's truly an excellent high speed stability approach disc that we found works extremely well for backhands or forehands, but it really wants you to commit to get the most out of the disc. Now where this disc truly shines is on flat to Anheuser releases. Flat shots will go straight with a subtle fade and aggressive shots will go straight with good stability. It really doesn't waver at all. However, it's the Anheuser turnover line that we love the most about this disc. It holds an Anheuser line beautifully and fights out of it fairly well, depending on the severity of the Anheuser angle and the power applied. You therefore aren't gonna get much of a finish left when turning this disc over, and it's also hard to overturn. So you can throw it very aggressively on an Anheuser release angle, and you can really trust the flight that you're gonna get. And in our opinion, this was the most comfortable and confident way to throw it. So now let's talk about what this disc doesn't do well. And we've already touched upon the first point, trying to max out or get extra distance out of this disc is just not gonna work. You're gonna lose some stability, you're gonna lose control, and it's just not gonna give you that ideal flight. The next thing is that the Berg is not really meant for aggressive hyzer type approach shots. Sure, you can throw it on a hyzer and it will hold the line, but it's very subtle. So personally, I still throw pigs for those big hyzer approach shots when I need the disc to hold a fade. Now, as previously mentioned, the thumb track is one of its best features, but it can also be a bit of a drawback when you're just starting to use this disc. Its unique profile takes some getting used to and feels a bit different to throw. It can feel a bit awkward. Another drawback to this disc is the need to commit. Because it's a high speed stability approach disc that just wants to drop out of the air as quickly as possible, you definitely need to commit to your throw or the disc just isn't gonna fly as far or perform as well. And lastly, although it's labeled to be a putt and approach disc, putting is definitely one of its weaker points. Since it's hard to keep in the air, it's just not gonna be good for putting. And there's a reason why most putters have a glide of two or three. However, Castaplast does mention it being great for aggressive putts, so spin putters may find some use out of this disc. And in our testing, the K3 turned out to be the best for putting due to its grip, feel, and firmness. So after being able to try out the Berg in several plastics and weights, we can honestly let you know that this disc truly lives up to the hype and it fills a gap that was sorely needed in the disc golf world. Personally, this disc has completely changed how I go about approaching the basket. And I used to approach with an AVR3 as well as a dart, but the Berg has replaced both of those discs and I really haven't looked back. Now, if you'd like your chance to win one of these Bergs, leave a comment below telling us why you feel a Berg would benefit you. If you like this video and you want more Just Disc content, like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're already a member, check out our Patreon for some exclusive Justice content. Thanks for watching and supporting Justice, and don't forget to check out acerunners.ca if you're looking to pick up a Berg or really any kind of disc golf equipment. We'll be sure to leave the link in the description. Thanks as always, we'll see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.